All right, everyone. I hope you guys are doing really well today. Um, I've been thinking a little bit more about this um, whole uh, situation in regards to the uh, anvil that Harbor Freight just recently put out and I bought one and I did kind of a box opening video and there have been quite a few videos on how to strip the paint off of it and how to bounce a ball bearing off of it and all that other good stuff. Um, anyway, so I kind of wanted to take a different approach to things. Um, the thought that came into my mind is how flat is this thing? Um, and so, um, let me get you guys turn around and let me do some explaining and we're going to do a little kind of, uh, experiment and see how it goes. Okay. You guys, this is a 18 by 24 surface plate. Um, I bought this for a project where I had to take some really accurate measurements. Um, and so I just thought it would be really fun um, because I have not really used this anvil yet um, to just see how flat it is when you pull it out of the box. So I have some die chem and I have a roller. Um, so let me, let me get you guys in the stand and let's ink this thing up and just flip it over and see how it comes out. Also, let me kind of show you my anvil that I made out of some railroad track a while ago. Okay, here you have it. This is my railroad track anvil that I kind of graduated from and I kind of made an attempt to make it into an anvil, but as you can see, I kind of butchered it in the process due to a lack of knowledge and understanding of what was going on. Because in my mind, um, I wanted to get some hard facing rod and um, build it up. And then, so what happened was that didn't work. So I wound up trying to carbon out gouge it and I was going to start over and just weld on a piece of, of tool steel plate, like a, a piece of leaf spring out of a semi truck and weld that on. But the more enlightened I came about different, um, temperaments of different types of tool steels and spring steels and um, the mechanical values and properties of the differences of steel and delamination and compression based delamination. Um, when people, they make comments like, Oh, just get some hard facing rod and just build it up and do all this other stuff. There, from a metallurgical perspective, there is so much going on with that. It is, it's better just to start over and start from scratch and just have one whole piece. Um, where the only time I could rationalize doing that, it was a restoration project where it made sense to, um, just from a financial point to restore an anvil and to spend that kind of money. Anyways, let me get you guys in the stand. Oh, and that's, this is the stand I was working off. You can just see how rickety and just how juvenile, you know, it looks like uh, a kid just got some power tools for his birthday and just grabs whatever and threw it together. That thing has lasted, that thing is probably a solid 30 years old, so it did okay. All right, let me get you guys in the stand. Okay, I'm hoping that angle is good. I apologize about the sound. little bit of this, this stuff goes a long ways and I think I may have gotten too much on. All right, I think we got a pretty decent patch going on here and it's, it seems like it's starting to just spread real even. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wipe off the top of the anvil 
this is really anybody who's a real machinist who sees what's going on here you're probably throwing up in your mouth and I understand where you're coming from and I get it um, just even for the simply for the fact the atmospheric dust that's just it, this environment is so unbelievably dirty but I figure for the sake of just seeing how flat an anvil is it's okay All right. Right now, I'm just I'm wiping off the top of the anvil with some denatured alcohol. Okay. And then I'm gonna see if I can very, very, very carefully slide it on. There's an art to doing this. Okay. Let's see if I could very, very gingerly flip this over. Okay. Wow. This is an interesting experiment. Very, 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 very interesting. Okay. The reason, another reason why for you guys that do machining and welding and sometimes people bring you stuff that's bent, sometimes and even if you never do hot work or you don't use a forge, but the value of being able to have an anvil for straightening stuff and flattening stuff out, um, like, like, there have been cases, even though my, my anvil, that railroad track anvil that I just showed you is really kind of a, a, a nice paperweight. Um, it was really nice to have something to straighten things out. So this, as you can see here on that front leading edge there, it's really high and it has a valley all the way to the back. Come on, you focus. Right there. So that's the heel, and this is the front shoulder area. So it probably, it has, I wouldn't be surprised if that was out um, anywhere. Gosh, I'd probably say I would like to put an indicator on it now. Um, anyways, this is how flat it is, or how flat it is not. Um, kind of a fun, pointless experiment. All right, you guys, um, I hope that was helpful in, in answering like, well, how flat is it? That is not very flat, but it'll still work for doing, um, if you had to straighten stuff out, um, it, it would work. Um, anyways, thanks for joining me. And as things progress with this thing and as I do more project with it, I will bring you guys along. Um, as always, please like, comment, and subscribe. Peace out.